Sleeves you with the Senior Pickleball Report powered by TNC Network. Let's get it going. Okay, today we are talking with Alex Simon, friend of the show, OKC Punishers player for NPL, third ranked duper male over 50 in the world, and sponsored by Thrive Pickleball. Talking to him about his Kenya trip and how to spread pickleball internationally. All right, check all the links in the description, subscribe, and hey, subscribe to that newsletter, man. Get your pickleball verse info on almost a daily basis. All right, let's get to that interview with Alex. All right, long time friend of the show, back again. He is the man that gives us usually our National Pickleball League updates, but this time we're going to talk about his travels and his ambassadorship around the world. Uh, Welcome back to the show, Alex Simon. Thanks so much for having me yet again. I uh, hope to uh, continue to be entertaining. Today, we're, we won't be talking about, uh, you know, National Pickleball League, but uh, other things happening. And um, yeah, share with you guys. yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, we when we first interviewed you, uh, we kind of got into what you wanted to do. And I think at that point, you had um, sort of done what, I, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, sort of an impromptu uh, clinic in Hong Kong. And that that really got the bug and the juices flowing for things outside of your tournament play and your own game. And so let's kind of remember a little bit and talk and review um, some of that for folks about how you really wanted to get into traveling and actually spreading the game more as an ambassador as well, not only playing the game and competing. So, Yeah, I'll make a a, a long story short, but my pickleball journey has been you know, a little over a year long now. I started in October of 2022. Yeah. And, it's crazy. And, you know, if you guys listen to my earlier podcast, I decided before ever playing pickleball, I wanted to be a, a professional pickleball player. In the <laughs> division. So uh, I, I did that and I achieved some some pretty good success early on. And I ended up going to Hong Kong on an unrelated trip, nothing to do with pickleball. Right. And I uh, went to go visit my daughter who lives over there. And so I went on Facebook. I started looking for, you know, Pickleball in Hong Kong, does anybody play? So there's a, a yeah. federation. I reached out to them. They said, yes, we'd love to play with you. Turns out they had never seen anybody of my level ever, you know, on the island. So they asked me if I would teach a clinic. I said, sure, I'll do an informal clinic. One clinic turned into two. And uh, more importantly, <laughs> you know, I only wanted to play professional. But after I taught those clinics, I decided, you know what? I love this stuff. It really yeah. is a pivotal moment in, in you know, my pickleball life. And I wanted to teach more and I wanted to become more of an ambassador, probably even more than a, than a professional player. Fast forward to today and I'm just returning from Africa. I was in Kenya. Right, right. Where I not only got a chance to teach uh, clinics, but I actually got to introduce pickleball to orphanages and, and oh, children wow. that had never, ever played pickleball. Uh, these are abandoned kids, all ages, yeah. babies to teenagers. And this was I mean, just an incredible trip, an incredible feeling being there, playing with, you know, the top players in Africa and we'll get more into the the whole story. But yeah, so I've been traveling. I've been going all over the U.S. You know, I I did my my Asia trip, which began everything. And now here we are in Africa looking, you know, to go to Europe coming up a a few times this year. So let's get into it. Yeah, I mean... Obviously, you know, we'll get into it and the possibilities seem to be endless as this this game starts to really go global. Um, and I think 2024 is a pivotal year um, where we're going to see it start to explode in other other regions and other markets. Um, before we get into the trip um, that you, you came back on, what do you think it is in your own life and your own background that really draws you to not just stay in the U.S. and, you know, you know, go to country clubs and teach people how to play pickleball, but like to really get out there um, and do sort of the groundwork for a game that is really starting to kind of uh, grow globally in all different continents. So what do you, I mean, I don't know if you've reflected on this at all, but what do you think, where do you think that comes from? Well, I love traveling. You know, I was raised actually in in South America, in Brazil, in the United States uh, to play college tennis. And I've been here ever since. 
But I see the growth. And of course, you first see it online. So you start seeing all these people in different groups that you join and they're, you know, they're coming from Africa, they're coming from Europe, they're coming from Asia, they're coming right. from Australia. And you see this sport growing, but at a very much a, a grassroots level. And yeah. I went to Hong Kong and, you know, there's about, at the time, 1,500 players. I imagine there's close to 2,000 now. The sport is really taking off over there. Right. They did not have one single dedicated pickleball court. Wow. Not one. Not one court. Wow. And there's 1,500 people playing. So yeah. we go out and we play on badminton courts. We play on basketball courts. We play on streets. They say we play wherever. Wherever we find room, we travel with right. our nets and our paddles and our balls. <laughs> so I'm thinking, you know what? People want pickleball. And yeah. if I, and, you know, I was surprised that I was by far the best player ever to come through Hong Kong. Yeah. I said, you know what? Why don't I do this everywhere and attach yeah. also a philanthropic element to it, which is what I did. And, you know, and also I created my own 501c3, my right. nonprofit, which is a 002 fund, which I'm also putting together and allows me to, to, you know, do these trips, but I just love seeing the growth of the sport and being able to go, you know, and in Africa, I mean, they, they brought and already moving into the Africa trip. I mean, yeah. they brought the best players in all of Africa wow. to take clinics for me. And yeah. to put this in perspective, there was a uh, one uh, lady, Brenda, who's uh, from Uganda and she took a 30 hour bus ride just to come learn from me for a couple of days. Yeah. Then M Mugisha, another guy who was trying to develop uh, pickleball in Rwanda, he took yeah. a 24-hour bus ride to come take clinics from me. So, yeah. I mean, just the feeling of, of gratitude and seeing the effort that these people are putting in, in into pickleball and into just coming to see me. Uh, yes. It's just amazing. So how can I not... You right. Know, get back and go to these places, and people are like, "Well, you know, there's so many nicer places, but yeah. I want to go to Africa. I want to go to yeah. Africa. I want to go to Nairobi, and and yeah. where somebody, you know, at my level with my knowledge of the game, may never again, or for a long time, hopefully there will be many right. better than me that will get there someday. But right. for now, uh. It's just an, such an awesome feeling uh, to go yeah. there and, and, and be able to uh, to teach the, the the little that I know to others. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, you know, you, you bring up a good point. It's it's about resources and it's about who has access to play this game. As simple as the sport is, and you don't need a lot of equipment to do it. Um, it still requires you know access to um, get to a place to play and find people to play with. I mean. You know, I, I spent a little time in Uganda about 12 years ago and, um, uh, you know, a different type of trip, but people did that. We, you know, we were dealing with people traveled for days and days. Like, and I'm not talking like, you know, how we travel, I'm talking like in the back of a pickup truck to get places. And so people really have a thirst for knowledge, whether it's about pickleball or anything else. And if it's something that they're into and somebody is there to, you know, divulge that information and has, you know, uh, the background to do it. Um, I, I find it just, I feel, I feel my, my privilege seeking through in my own life where I'm like, Oh, I got to drive down to the courts today. It's down this so far and blah, blah, blah. And I, I just got to check myself once in a while and go, listen, man, <laughs> you know, the fact that a, you can physically play uh, is something to be grateful for. And then right. two, obviously, um, you know, traveling a few miles to go and play um, is another thing. So talk about how this trip came together because you talked a little bit about your philanthropy and, and, you know, why Kenya and how did it come together? Yeah. You know, I, the internet is fantastic, right? So I meet all these people and especially Facebook and, and Instagram and I will talk to anybody. If I see somebody in a group yeah. that's from a different country, I'm like, Hey, how can we bring, Pickleball, how can I contribute to the growth of pickleball in your country? Right. And so the conversations go. So I talked to actually a lot of people in, in different parts of, of the world. So I, I spoke to a guy in, in uh, Cairo, Egypt last night, wants me yeah. to go over there. And later wow. I'll talk about all the other countries that I, that I want yeah. to go to. Um, and then some of them work out, some of them for a variety of reasons do not. But sure. uh, I reached out to, you know, somehow got in touch with this guy, Joe, who owns a Nairobi Pickleball Club. So he built, okay. he's a, a Swiss guy who lives in, in Nairobi, and he built this club yeah. with uh, four courts, just out of his own pocket. 
And yep. uh, I said, hey, what will it take for me to go over there? He goes, well, you know, let's find some sponsors. And by the way, Thrive, who you're repping today, is uh, my personal sponsor. And they contributed to yeah. get me over to... Uh, Great company, yeah. Uh, they gave me equipment. So I brought a bunch of paddles over there. Um, so Joe said, okay, let, let, let's bring you over. And we checked my schedule. And, you know, it's it's far. I mean, I sure. Oh, yeah. Vegas. That's no joke, I, man. <laughs> I flew 11 hours to Amsterdam. Got to wait there yeah. for a few hours. Then take another 10 and a half hour, you know, yeah. to Nairobi. It's, it's a, right. you know... Yeah, like Amsterdam's uh, halfway. Yeah. <laughs> Amsterdam, you're going up, you know, you think you're getting yeah. closer. You, you're kind of getting closer to Africa, but not really. Right. You know, you go not up and really, go no. down. Yeah. So I finally make it there. I only stay there four days, four days, five nights. Yeah, that's a tough turnaround. The schedule doesn't, doesn't allow me, you know, but I don't want a short turnaround to keep me from doing these things. So if right. I can fit in six days in my schedule and I got a full-time job, plus I, yeah. I played pickleball full-time, um, right. I will make it happen. So off I go, Joe said, okay, you know, come here. Uh, I basically taught the clinics. It was all just, you know, pro bono. I, I didn't ask yeah. for any money. They covered my yeah. travel expenses. I stayed at Joe's house, uh, right. no luxury. Uh, no, not all, all the African players, you know, local players, they paid whatever they could, uh, yeah. which that got donated by Nairobi Pickleball Club and Joe to the girl from uh, Uganda. So it's wow. all like, you know, everybody yeah. pitches in, you pay what you yeah. want, then we donate right. the money. Plus, I brought bags full of equipment, clothes, balls, nets, you name it. Um, right. And then I actually got to spend a whole day teaching and introducing pickleball to one of the many orphanages that they have uh, in yeah. Nairobi, which was really the, the highlight of the trip. Sleeves here with the Senior Pickleball Report powered by TNC Network talking picklin. What's picklin? It's a little five foot wide net that you can use when you just want to pepper around with somebody, hit it back and forth, and you don't have any space, but you just need you know a couple feet. You can put it up against the wall, legs kind of fold in. Really simple fold-up design, goes into a nice little carrying case. 50 bucks, link in the description. Great practice tool because when you're playing against the wall and just having a line, you still don't have that visual like you do in a game in that peripheral, which is the net. And there's something different about practicing against the wall with a net. Trust me, I just started doing it, and I did it with Picklin. Link in the description. See you next time. And hey, let's pickle. And <laughs> see what I did there. Are you looking to stay up to date on the latest pickleball news and tips? Look no further than the Sleeve Senior Pickleball Report newsletter. Get the scoop on the sport, learn how to stay healthy while playing, and find out about upcoming tournaments. Subscribe now to get all the pickleball info you need. I mean, it's yeah. just incredible. These kids had never seen pickleball, uh, yeah. never played it. And now they, you know, we, we leave everything there. So we come, we right. teach them, we show them how to play. We keep it simple. We don't get into doubles, no. rules, or counting. Stacking. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's the uh, the third trip. We'll get it. Yeah, getting the staggy. But, you know, but what's most important is I go there, you know, and, and I go with Joe's group, and he has people that help him at the club. We all go to the orphanage. We, we, we introduce pickleball, but I made sure, and I told Joe, listen, after I leave, because I can't be coming back to to Kenya, you know, every month. Uh, right. Promise me that you will go back there. You know, it's not just yeah. leaving stuff here. You guys are on your own. Right. How they're doing. You got to do follow up. Got to follow up. So he's actually doing that. He's actually now, you know, I've come back for a couple of weeks. He already had some of the better players, the kids that are most interested in the game, brought him to his club and taught them how to keep score. And so now they can go back to the orphanage and right. now teach other kids. So it doesn't just depend on guys like me or, that, or Joe and his staff. At the right. Club. Uh, now, it grows and now they can go to another orphanage which they already started and that's how you keep you right. know, spreading the game and, and doing good yeah so that's how it, it came about and yeah it and uh, everything I, I thought it would be oh yeah i mean that's an amazing story um so, I mean, where do you see this going i mean obviously you you, you know you just gotten started you humble beginnings in hong kong and you know pretty humble beginnings obviously in kenya and um 
do you see this where you're building a team eventually um, and, and having people go out? I mean, is it, do you have goals with this? Um, kind of what do you see yeah. happening? You know, everything is uh, is happening so fast. I mean, uh, a little over a year ago, I wasn't even playing pickleball. Right. I even, well, I, I, pickleball wasn't even on my radar. No. So in one year, all this happened. I'm playing, you know, I'm, I'm ranked number three in the world in singles. So then I yeah. can figure out what's happening. You know, wh- where do I want to go with my professional pickleball? I just played open pro at the PPA Las Vegas. So right. Played play in a new league. Guys. I mean, you did a lot in one year. Yeah. <laughs> so I played league. Now I'm playing open pro singles with the young guys. Um, you know, then I have the clinics, which I love to do. I love teaching yeah. clinics. So now I'll be going to Italy, Northern Italy in, in the beginning of May or yeah, beginning of May. Then I go to Eastern Europe in September. Plus there's trips, you know, those will fill in between there the too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, something else that I've been doing, which is phenomenal and I haven't made it public, but I, I think I can now is I've actually been working with uh, Andre Agassi on wow. his pickleball. Yeah. So him and I play, you know, about three times a week and uh, just singles. So he, him and I, you know, we just work on his singles game and he's, he's such a good player. He's really getting into the game. Yeah. So then, you know, I do that. So, you know, he asked me, where's my pickleball going? I mean, honestly, I love the ambassadorship. I love teaching. I love spreading the game. Uh, And and I mentioned it to you before the the, the playing, right. It's like, it's almost like a like a selfish thing, like my thing. Yeah, I'm number one in the world, two, three, whatever. You know, I'm yeah. chasing that. I've never been number one, but I, you know, I've right. been number yeah. two. I want to chase number one, and and that is nice. And it's a lot of work. And I'm still 51 years old, and yeah. you know, I'm playing open pro with with the 20 year olds. <laughs> but then there's the the, the selfless part, the, the, the teaching others and 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 making others happy and introducing them to the game. Right. And that is, I, I think, truly where where my heart lies is in wow the teaching which I, I never thought you know when I started playing I was like I want to be a professional I want to play right. I want to be top rank and now right. having experienced the giving part and the teaching and and showing the game introducing the game making players better yeah um, I love it so I uh, to answer your question you know in short is I see myself pursuing that probably more so than playing uh, I, yeah. I love it. It's, yeah. it's where my heart is. Right. Because I mean, if the playing will come, I mean, you can actually, you know, mm-hmm. as this sport grows and if you're, you know, you're, you're doing things on a global level, um, you're going to be playing internationally and you're going to be playing exhibitions and you're going to be playing tournaments because, you know, you're here for X amount of time and you're teaching and, um, or you're, you know, you're heading up a trip to somewhere else. And, but I think long-term, you know, and you touched on this a little bit with just the, the, you know, the gratefulness of people traveling to come and see you is, you know, where does this game and what does this game look like in 10 years when some kid from an orphanage in Africa, you know, is playing in uh, the Olympic games when this sport, you know, eventually makes it to the Olympic games and probably in the 2030s. Um, and, you know, and, and, and those kids are carrying the game forward because as it explodes, uh, you know, the, the game will develop. It will be, it won't look anything like the game we're playing today on some levels. If you look at tennis 20 years ago, as good as it is, you look at it today, you're like, man, they're doing some stuff that we didn't even think about. Um, and so once these games explode in other areas and those people have their backgrounds and, you know, they bring table tennis to it or whatever it happens to be look out. But I think it takes folks like you and people willing to go out there and really sort of um, bring it up from the grassroots, you know, not just at the country clubs where people have access to anything they want. I mean, that's not knocking country club life. It's just, it's just the facts that not everybody has access to these games. And this is a game where you don't need a lot of equipment and, um, it's, it's pretty simple to teach. That's absolutely a a great point you make. You know, it's not an expensive game. So if, if, if you have a, you know, a little bit of land and people in the Philippines, Philippines, they play on the streets, Right, wherever you find. So as long as you have painter tape, net, pads, yeah. you know, and some balls, you're playing. Yeah. So right. it is possible to bring this game to underdeveloped areas that these kids can play and give them a chance if they practice and they become good enough to play pro. Mm-hmm. Hey, the better. And we're seeing, you know, a lot more juniors playing the game. And of course, I, you know, as nice as it, as it is for me to play professional i'm 51 years old <laughs> yeah not right my, my future i mean right. my body's gonna give up at some yeah. point so why not 
and you know use this time and this opportunity that I have to go out and and show the game, uh, you know, to the young folks and let them uh, take over and, and right, and, and right, and carry it forward. Yeah, passing yeah. the torch, so to speak. Well, I mean, it sounds like an amazing trip, and obviously, we'll touch base with you as the year goes on. Twenty twenty four, I think, is going to be an explosive year in pickleball, and um, clearly an explosive year in your pickleball life as well, because I mean, what you did year one, uh, you're just winding up, it sounds like to me. So let's talk about you personally in 2024. Um, what are you looking to do? I know you work your ass off. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you, you're hitting balls all the time. You got practice partners. You're running Andre Agassi around. What do you, what do you kind of want to accomplish as a player in 2024? I think it'll be a combination of uh, playing and traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I need to be, uh, you know, honest with myself with the goals that I set. Yeah. Uh, you know, to, to become number one and, and I'm close, but the guys ahead of me are just, the, they're world class and I know I'm not there yet. Yeah. It would take a lot of practicing. So mm -hmm. I, I am not that concerned with, with being number one. I just want to go out, have fun. And yeah. uh, if it needs to take a, a back seat to, uh, promoting the game and being an ambassador of the game and, and do clinics elsewhere and, and bring my knowledge to other people. So be it. Right. That's more important. So to, yeah, it's going to be a combination of playing some, not sure what I'll be playing. Of course, singles, you know, that's sure. my cup of tea and that's where, where I excel, but my doubles has been coming along nicely, especially with NPL where I got to play a lot of doubles and a lot of doubles with tremendous players that, you know, the best seniors right. in the world were, were playing. So right. I'm not sure where that's going to go, but uh, yeah, combination of traveling clinics, hopefully doing some good, introducing pickleball, not, not just abroad, because I want to bring it to inner city kids. I think those things. So right. if anybody's watching this and has any ideas, hit me up. I mean, uh, right. I'll be happy to come to your city and introduce it to, to anyone that wants to play and I'll get sponsors on board. Yeah. That's and it's a great, I mean, I, I, I think it's a great, you know, I think of, you know, I think of the 1950s and kids playing stickball in the streets, of, you know, and, and Willie Mays playing as a kid playing baseball in the streets with a stick and a ball. And I think of kids playing, you know, basketball in these playgrounds. And this game can do all of those things. You could set it up in a driveway. You could set it up on playgrounds. I mean, parks, you name it, the space. And I think as it explodes and as people like you go out and, and give access to these areas, you're going to see some amazing people come out of these areas, not only uh, players, but people that, you know, have the gift of, of teaching, you know, you don't even have to be a great player to be able to teach. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you can understand the game. And I think those are the areas too, that we, we sort of miss out on. We want to get everybody playing, but we also need people who can, who can teach the game, who know how to set up uh, foundations, you know, it's all encompassing and we're just kind of getting rolling on this. And so I think for all of us that are involved, you know, sort of, um, at the, what I would call the, the beginning of the gold rush. Um, it's pretty mm -hmm. exciting because the, the possibilities just seem endless. So, yeah, it's kind of it, it, the sport and believe me, I'm, I'm in the trenches out there in, in yeah. different countries and I can see it. People want pickleball, people that are introduced to pickleball, love pickleball. It's just going to be, a, yeah, man. you know, such tremendous growth. And I'm, I'm just happy that we're able to be a, a part of it and, and participate and look back maybe in 10 years and say, Hey, Sleeves, you and I were there when this first no. started. Remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, and I got a feeling we will be. I mean, yeah, it'll yeah, be pretty sure. cool. So absolutely. Well, hey, thanks again. Alex Simon uh, out of Las Vegas, played for the OKC Punishers, ranked third currently duper in the world, 50 plus men singles and sponsored by one of the coolest paddle companies you'll ever deal with, Thrive, and uh, doing everything he can, spreading the word and look for him out there. Um, you want to travel with him and do some work with him. Uh, we'll have links in the description for his upcoming events. Thanks again, Alex. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate the platform to uh, spread my message and, uh, and talk about pickleball. Always a pleasure being yeah. here. Yeah, you're always welcome, brother. All right, man. Hope you enjoyed our interview with Alex Simon. And check out the links if you want to follow what he is doing and go on a trip with Alex. I highly recommend it. The guy is one heck of a player, teacher, and human being. All right, folks. Hey, another day. Let's pickle.